Hello and welcome to another bowl of Linux soup. Today we're going to be looking at Bash. This is the first episode of my Bash tutorial, and I'll be giving you a few commands to start you off in the terminal for those of you interested in learning the command line. Uh, first off, I'll just introduce the terminology to you. Uh, you might hear command line, C command line, CLI, uh, terminal, command prompt, terminal emulator, um, that's command prompt, that's what this is, that type of commands in it, uh, this is what you used before you had the graphical user interface, if you wanted to interface with the operating system, you had to use the command line. It might also be referred to, a, referred to as a TUI or text user interface. It's also another terminology for it. You might also hear the word TTY, I forget what it stands for, but if you hit Control Alt, then one of the F keys between or between one and six, or one through six, then you'll go to one of those TTYs. Which think of it as a full screen command prompt, no graphics whatsoever that you can log into and use. And either Control F7 or Control F8 will get you back to your GUI. Now this is pretty useful, let's say your GUI hangs and you can't restart it, you could drop to a TTY and attempt to rescue it, I've done that countless times, saves a reboot, it's really great. If your GUI acts up, you can just go to a TTY and mend it. Can't do that in Windows, that's one thing that irritates me, one advantage of links is the TTY. Now, onto the command prompt itself and its commands. First of all, we need to see the contents of the directory. So let's just see all normal files and folders. So let's type in ls, and we see everything in our home folder. Let me open up Nautilus and see. Now we might want to see hidden files and folders, so hit Control h here. Here's all my hidden files and folders. Do the same thing we type in ls-a. If we want to ignore this dot and two dots, then we type in ls-a. And they're gone. Now, pay attention to the two dots and one dot, because it'll be useful later. clear text off the screen and type clear. Now we might, we need to navigate too, we need to be able to move around. So let's view the contents of our directory. Maybe I want to go to desktop, so I type in cd for change directory, space, desktop. And I can view the direct, or the contents of the directory there. Nothing here. Uh, if I, uh, want to go home, I can just type cd, and no matter where you are in your operating system, this will take you back to your home folder. So, let's say I go to root, the highest of the hierarchy, I go to bin, uh, yeah. let's say, uh, uh, proc, and we go to 8. We go to FD. Can't go there. Maybe TTR? Yeah. And we want to go home. CD. Bam. We're right home. Go home here. Hide the files and folders. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, let's say I'm in documents. Uh, the dot and the dot dot. The uh, one dot stands for current directory, and the two dot stands for one directory up, so I'm in music, we can go one directory up, one directory up, now we're in home, go another directory up, we're in root, cd, we're back home. Two more variables, dollar home, and tilde, or tilde. That's shift, and then the key that's to the left of one below escape. We can do that to, uh, that stands for home that way, I don't have to say, uh, slash home, slash pingcasts. I can just say dollar home, 
or simply tilde. tilde. Now we've viewed the contents of our directory, we've cleared text off the screen, we've just jumped to our home directory, we've taken a look at a few variables, uh, and we've just moved around and looked at stuff. Now we want to actually interact with it. So first, let's create stuff. Let's create a file. We use that with a touch command, so I'm going to touch uh, file1. Now let's look at our folder again. See file one, and here it's in our folder right here. If I want to remove it, that's with the rm command. Be careful with this. This is not like standard deleting. See, when you you move it to the trash can when you use it in uh, the graphical manager. I think Windows says delete. This is it's a bit more accurate in Nautilus. It says move to trash because you're not actually deleting. You're just moving it to the trash can. This will actually delete it. Uh, you might be able to recover it if you use certain recovery software, but that's uh, beyond the scope of this. Um, as far as the OS is concerned, the file's gone. Uh, we also want to create a folder, so we say mkdir folder1. Let's look at our, di our directory again, we see folder1. And if you look here, we see folder 1. We need to use rm-r to remove a folder. And that's gone. And same thing with the file. You might be able to use data recovery software on that, but as far as the OS is concerned, this thing is gone. You need the dash r for the folder. Because in order to delete a file, or a, uh, excuse me, a folder, you have to delete all files and folders within that folder then you can delete the folder. Dash R is, means recursive, so it does it to every single file and folder within that folder, so it gets rid of it, so that you can then delete the folder. And that's why you must have the dash R flag. Now, let's say you're kind of paranoid about deleting something that you might... Uh, you're just deleting stuff and you're afraid that you might accidentally delete something you want. We can fix that with the dash i flag. So, let's touch file 1 again. And we'll say rm dash i file 1. Remove regular empty file. Let's say, oh no, that's important. I don't want to delete that. And maybe we change our mind. We can say yes. Or, make folder 1. We can uh, ri folder 1, remove directory, yes. Now it will prompt you, if you use the i on the directory and there are folders inside of it, it will uh, it will prompt you for every single file. That If you have a couple that might not get annoying, but let's say you have 50, it gets ridiculous. So let's say our kdir folder 1, and if you don't understand what I'm doing right here, that's okay. It's beyond the scope of this tutorial. I now have 50 blank files named 1 through 50. So if I have, if I rm-i this directory, do I want to descend into it? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It is ridiculous. So it can get annoying if uh, you prompt yourself all the time if the directory is rather large. Uh, if you still, if you want to make this permanent, you don't want to type dash i every time, just uh, do this, control h. Look for dot bash rc, right click, open with text editor, and right here say uh, alias rm is rm equals a single quote rm dash i. Save that, close that, press control h, and then it will that way. It, well, this has to be reloaded. I'll explain this later. Just do that if you don't feel if you don't want to 
close and open up the terminal. If you if that's too much for you, you can just close and open up the terminal again. It's just that one time because it has the settings from before we loaded or we typed in bash rc, and I'll explain this in another episode. But now, let's say touch file one, rm file one. Yes. And now it's aliased. Or so every time we type in rm, do rm dash i. So, we looked at files, we've moved around files and folders, we've created and deleted files and folders, we've cleared text off the screen. Oh, some other things, uh, I used file or folders and directories interchangeably. Yeah, a, f a folder is a directory, if you didn't already realize that. They're the same thing. And you might hear directory a bit more when you're talking command line. Uh, I said variables, that's just, it. it's say equal to something else, it's a value of something else, I can explain this in later episodes, but for now I just think variables equal to something else. So, uh, ls to view the contents of a directory, cd to move around, touch to create files, and files, mkdr to create folders, rm, to remove files, rm-r to remove folders. Uh, just burn those commands into your brain. Clear to clear text off the screen. Just burn those into your brain, practice them, and I will see you in the next episode where I'll teach you even more command line stuff. So I hope you enjoy this. Stay tuned for another Pinkcast.